a customer called me today and asked me how to draw a heart in Vetric, and he happens to be using VCarve Pro. Uh, I'm gonna. I decided to do a little tutorial here rather than uh, try to explain it to him over the phone, and hopefully, uh, you guys will find this useful because this will apply to any shape, not necessarily a heart. Uh, it doesn't matter which version of Vectric you're using, whether you're using Cut2D Pro like I am, the desktop version, uh, VCarve Desktop or VCarve Pro, the process is the same with all of them. So what we're going to do here, first thing we need to do is go to Google and we're going to type in heart and we're going to click on images. And what we need to do is find a heart image that we can trace. I like to go to outlines and I will find a heart that I like uh, that we can do a, a trace on. This one here is kind of nice. Uh, we're gonna use this. We're gonna click on, right click the mouse and click save image as. And I'm using a Mac. Uh, actually, this is uh, as parallels within a Mac. So you, what you're looking at right now is Windows. So that's fine. If you're using a Mac, you're, you're gonna, you may have a different thing that comes up when you right click. Uh, so I'm going to save this in, I made a folder called uh, Heart Tutorial, so I'm going to save that in there. We're going to click on Create a New File, and for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to make this 12 by 12 inches, the work area, half inch thick piece of material. Z0 is going to be the top of the material with the starting point in the center of the job. We could go lower left, but in this case, we're just for keeping this easy, we're going to go right in the center. That's where you would put your tool and zero out your workpiece. Uh, on your step craft if you're or any CNC for that matter if you're doing this we're gonna work in inches so we're gonna click OK first thing we need to do is import bitmap for tracing so we're gonna click this icon right here and we're gonna go to the folder wherever you save that image and we're gonna load it there it is nice heart so uh, we're gonna click outside the heart and I wanna zoom in to uh, so I can get a, a good view of it. I would normally do it with the center wheel on my mouse, but I've got a Mac mouse. It tends to be very sensitive with uh, with uh, Cut 2D, so I'm just going to do it the manual way. We're going to create a line. Uh, believe it or not, to make a heart, all we need is a straight line, and I'll show you what I mean. Click on the draw line. We're going to find the spot that's the lowest point in that heart, and we're going to click on it. Now we made a line. And what we want to do is we want to draw a straight line. And you'll notice that, see how there's a squiggly line next to the pointer uh, at either side. But as you get close to the center, it turns into a circle with an up and down arrow attached to it. That means that it's a, it's a straight up and down vertical line. And that's what we want. We want to make sure that our line is vertical. We're going to move to the bottom point of the heart. And we're going to click, we're going to, uh, click the mouse. And you'll notice that the line kind of... Uh, it keeps going. It's ready for its next point. Just hit the escape key and you'll see that that line now turns into a vector which is indicated by turning purple and dashed. Uh, you can also see I drew the line a little bit further past the image so we're gonna fix that. Uh, we're gonna go to node editing and what I'm gonna do is just click on that node and I'm gonna drag it up slightly and Right there so now I've got my line vertical the other thing I'm gonna do is while I'm still in node editing mode I'm gonna right click my mouse on the line um, in node editing mode which I got out of and we're gonna try it one more time here there we go we got to click the line and then uh, right click and we're gonna click to bezier now what's going to happen is you're going to get two handles, two node editing handles that are going to appear on your straight line. And what you want to do is you want to go ahead and click on that one of those squares and move it. And you'll notice you're now able to make the line in any kind of shape you want. And what you're going to do is you're going to move these lines and you're going to watch how the line kind of follows the the heart right so you're you're gonna you're gonna have to move both of them and it's kind of working back and forth and slowly you'll see that you'll you you'll with practice you'll find this very very easy that you'll be able to draw the vector and uh, move with just two points and create a shape just like this heart so we're gonna work back and forth here when you move one it does adjust the other slightly um, and let's see I think that's perfect so there's there's an now an, an outline of half of the heart 
So we're going to click outside that and we're going to go over here to the layer tab and we're going to click on that and we're going to click the light bulb next to the bitmap layer, which is going to turn the heart image off. Now you can see we have half a heart vector that's drawn. So we're going to click on uh, selection mode, which the first arrow here, I'm going to click on that and you'll see that we've selected half the heart. We're going to mirror it and there's a button here under transform objects uh, called mirror selected objects. Now what we want to do is we want to flip it about center, so make sure that's checked, and we want to create a mirrored copy. If we don't do that and we flip it horizontal, it'll just move it. Uh, but it won't create a second version and we want to create a second version so we're going to create a mirrored copy and flip horizontal and there you go there's the heart is starting to take shape now one thing you'll notice here is because I, I flipped it on the center of the workpiece my line originally didn't start right on the center it started slightly off which is fine so what I want to do is I want to join these two points together all I need to do with the, that half of the new half of the heart selected is just hit the right arrow key a couple times while I'm zoomed in until they touch. Now I've got it pretty pretty close. That's that's as good as uh, as I'm going to need to get. And you can see I've got half the heart highlighted. Now you, what you'll see here is if I click on this half and this half, there there's two separate vectors, and I need to join them together. So I'm going to highlight them both, and I'm going to go over here to join open vectors. Now, there's a tolerance uh, setting here, and depending on what you have, sometimes I have it set to 1,000, and if I have it set to that, you'll see that there's two open vectors, but the join button is grayed out. So you, you'll have to make adjustments to the tolerance, we'll go down to a tenth of an inch, until the join button is uh, not grayed out anymore. So now I can click join, and now when I click on the heart, you can see it's, it's one vector now which is what I want. Great. So the last thing I'm going to do at this point is I'm just going to select the heart and I'm going to align it to the center of the object. And you'll, if you zoom in, you'll see both sides, uh, the low point there. Now it's right on the center line of my workpiece, which is what I wanted. So that's it. There's, there's a heart. That's how you make it. It doesn't get any simpler than that. Now, if you want to cut the heart, let's, let's look at a couple things you can do. We're going to open up the tool pass and we're going to pin that. Now, first thing we can do is create a pocket. I'm sorry, create a profile. And what we'll do is we click on profile and uh, we're going to set the start depth to zero, which is the top of the work surface. And we're going to cut all the way through. So we're going to, we're actually going to cut this heart out completely of a piece of material. We're going to select the end mill at an eighth of an inch. And that end mill actually has, we're taking a sixteenth of an inch per pass. We're at 25 millimeters per second, which is half of the uh, full speed. Um, of the stepcraft machine and we're doing a plunge rate of 10 uh, the spindle speed is not going to matter uh, you'll vary it based on the type of material you're doing the depths per pass the, or the path settings this is set for eight passes it's going to make to cut through a half inch material now obviously if you're doing something soft like foam you can probably do it in one pass or maybe two uh, if you're doing something super hard like aluminum you know you may be 20 passes uh, it really depends on the material but uh, doing half of the diameter as your initial start point for your depth per pass is more than okay for most woods and plastics. So we're going to leave it at that. We're going to click outside. We want to cut outside the vector. We, so we want this heart will be the final shape. Um, climber conventional doesn't really matter. That's up to you based on the material and the types of tools you're using. We are, for the sake of keeping this simple, we're not going to use tabs. We will call this heart profile and we'll click calculate so on my work area which I have set to blue plastic let's uh, let's change this to um, I don't know, let's make it maple okay there you go now we'll click on preview selected toolpath and you could see it cut it out if I double click on the waste material I now have a heart that's a half inch thick and I've created a profile so there's my heart too bad it wasn't Valentine's Day so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset the preview and we are going to, I'm going to show you what else you can do with this uh, now that you have the vector. So we created a profile the first time. This time we're going to create a pocket. We're going to go down a quarter of an inch. Uh, we're using a half inch material so we're going to pocket down half the, half the uh, thickness of the material. We're going to use the same end mill except this time it's, it automatically calculates to four passes which is 
uh, which makes sense because we were doing a half inch before at eight passes. So now we're doing a quarter at four. Uh, we're going to use an offset uh, clearing path, which you could use raster as well. Offset is basically going to go around the perimeter and it's going to keep going until it gets to the center. And that's how it's going to clear it. Uh, I'm not worried about ranch ramp plunge, plunge moves or anything like that right now. We're going to call this heart pocket and we're going to click calculate. Now, if I click preview selected tool path here, you'll see that the tool is animated and we are we have made a pocket in our workpiece. Now, to keep with the fact that it's a heart, we'll change that color to red. And now you can see we've got a pocketed area, a quarter of an inch in this workpiece. So that's just two examples of what you can do uh, with a heart. The last example is if you were to go back, you selected the heart. This time we'll do a, a profile tool path. Uh, we'll keep the same end mill. Um, we will go down a quarter of an inch and we are going to select on the line and click calculate. And this time we're going to do um, heart outline and click calculate. We're going to reset the tool path, preview selected tool path, and you'll see now what we did is we created a single pass that's the diameter of, or the width of our, the diameter of our tool, which is an eighth of an inch. And we went down a quarter of an inch deep and we made the heart design. So maybe you're doing a sign where you wanna just engrave an outline of a heart. You could certainly use like a V, a half inch V bit or something and you'll, you'll have beveled edges. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do once you have this in there. Now, this is a, a heart. We could have used any object and used the same tracing functions to bring those objects in. Uh, so, you know, it could have been a square, could have been a, a real complicated object that you might have taken an hour or so to do all of the vector tracing. But once you have it, it's a vector. Now you can scale it to any size you want. So this heart right now is almost eight inches wide. If I want to change the size, I can go over here to move, scale, rotate. And you'll notice that all these squares appear. Now, if I take the uh, corner square, the hollow one, and I hold my shift key, I can now bring that in or out and resize it. And it's going to be, uh, by holding the shift key, it's going to keep it symmetrical, right? So I can make it smaller. I could also, if I grab one of these keys here, I can stretch it out this way. Um, so you can do that from either side, but by holding it in the corner, it, it's going to go ahead and it's going to keep it symmetrical. So we're going to go back to the original shape. Now you can also uh, click on the solid square and that's gonna allow you to rotate the heart. So you can rotate it any way you want. And by clicking on the line, you'll notice that the there's like a plus sign with four arrows that appears. That's gonna allow you to hold your mouse button down and actually move the heart wherever you want. Now if I wanted to make a duplicate on this side of the heart, all I have to do is go over here to the mirror selected objects and I can keep everything the same flip about center, create a mirror, copy, and clip, click uh, flip horizontal. Now I have the heart over here. It's a, exactly in the same spot as it is on this side, uh, and not, but it's just on the opposite side, and it's, it's opposite, so it's flipped. So now if I want to create two more down here that are upside down, but in, in the same uh, angle, I can highlight them. This time I go over here and I do flip vertical. And now I have four hearts here, and they're all spaced out evenly and they're all in the in the appropriate spot uh, and relative to the work material. So a lot of things you can do. Again, you could use any kind of uh, tracing or any any kind of uh, image that you bring in to do tracing on. So that hopefully this helps you out. This is a, uh, a very simple tutorial to show you how to get a basic shape using the line tool and Bezier and, and uh, some adjustment uh, points on the line and you're good to go. If you have any other requests for uh, you know, simple tutorials to show you how to do something, please email us at info at stepcraft.us. Thank you.